and it all started in 1993. So here we are just barely in 2024, and I'm gonna give you a walkthrough about why I made and what Harmony as Fraud is about. Um, so when you come through the gallery, one of the first opening lines is a series of two and a quarter uh, shot with a house of law, black and white photographs of various friends throughout my life. I would say that the show prop, uh, primarily focuses on the 90s, and it is mainly because of just how my life has been compartmentalized recently. And so the 90s, I wanted to go back, but I also wanted to go back to the 90s for a real specific reason, and that is the kind of politic that is always embedded within my work. And if we remember in the 80s and 90s in LA, I certainly remember being part of ACT UP and Queer Nation and the relationship of Jesse Helms holding up Maplethorpe photographs in Congress and all of this, and that we made progress, <coughs> and then we're still in a place where harmony is fraught, thus the title. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was really think about the relationship of the city as a body to the queer body. And so that is the thesis that I begin to present. So you start out with these black and white photographs, and you know, I never really showed them ever in the 90s because they were always so close to Peter Bouchard and Maplethorpe. So within the bodies of work, I've always tried to kind of escape the, my own history of contemporary photography to a certain extent by leaning into painting, leaning into these more quiet moments through those kinds of histories, and uh, kind of always was a documentary photographer, but mainly have shown you guys very concise bodies of work of ideas. And this is where I'm taking all of those ideas and I'm kind of breaking them down and fracturing them and putting them back together. Things that you'll notice behind you is a freeway photograph, but it is a large freeway photograph. None of the images in this exhibition, even though they hint to other bodies of work, are actually part of those bodies of work. So these are all negatives that I chose surrounding the bodies of work. In the same way that the city surrounds you, the bodies of work begin to envelop you and surround you as well. When I was the lab tech at UC Irvine, and I drove five days a week from LA down to Irvine, all through the 90s, and I designed and I built the entire darkroom systems at Irvine, and that's what I was hired for, to be the lab tech. Um, I started making the freeway photographs in 94, 95 because of my commute. Because I was like literally thinking about these structures and thinking about the history of these structures. And I had just designed the most beautiful mural darkroom for archival black and white printing you could imagine that I was so proud of. And so the freeways were always going to be big. I was going to print them in the darkroom, like fiber-based printing, because I printed all of my work all of these years and they were gonna be big freeways, and then I fell in love with the contact sheets, and then I fell in love with the idea of, you know, kind of imbuing the history of platinum printing in with the freeways to begin to think about Egyptian, you know, pyramids and certain kind of ideas of how I could frame it from a photographic way. So for the first time, you have what I had originally desired of the freeways. Uh, this is the 105 as it's getting built. You'll notice that the structure uh, the exhibition has a freeway in the front and Michael Malson's image in, in the back. And so that is very specific and I'll talk about that today as well. So this is what I consider the kind of first constellation of my life of moving to LA. And it's, uh, this is very diaristic of a show so I really hope that I don't cry. <laughs> but I might, so warning, I, I tend to be weepy at 62. Um, <laughs> So Tony Green was one of my best friends at CalArts who died of AIDS early on and was one of my first good, good friends who lived behind me in Silver Lake who died of AIDS. I had documented his whole entire studio at the request of our friends uh, the day after that he, he passed away. And those photographs have been seen at the Mac Center and, and other places, but when I went back into the archive, what I didn't realize is that I also made the work in color. So I found the color negatives. So we all know Tony Green's studio from the black and white photographs, but this is the first time that in color you can see Tony's collection and the way that he used color in his work and everything like that, and it changes the way that I, it becomes even more personal. 
And so the last constellation ends with, you know, me, my longing of a domestic dream, my being able to get a domestic dream in terms of my house in West Adams or my son Oliver, and all of these other kind of things combined in relationship to desire and being a dyke and all of that stuff. And so here's Pam on the other side of those three bedroom windows, and this is called Sunday Morning Sex. And then this is me on the way to the desert where I'm 28 years old. So this is 1988, 89, around there. And then on this wall too, because of the accoutrements of what's happening here in this morning sex scene, you then have my medicine cabinet. So it begins to be a self-portrait, you know, so to speak, of my medicine cabinet, but it's funny. Because everybody, when I was photographing Elizabeth Taylor's house and making that body of work, 700 names, kept saying, Where's the medicine cabinet, Kathy? Why don't you have Elizabeth's medicine cabinet? And I was like, I'm not going to photograph Elizabeth's medicine cabinet. There's a lot of other things here. So, but I'm willing to show you an 8x10, and this was shot with an 8x10 negative of my medicine cabinet. Because the irony here is all laid out in my kind of complicated relationship to my identity in my 20s. So you've got Bo's mustache up here from being and having, as well as the self-portrait I did of Bo with a spirit gum. You've obviously got a dildo and some Vagisil. But the most ironic thing is the fact that I am still bleaching my own mustache while I wear a fake mustache. So <laughs> obviously the complicatedness to femininity is very confusing to me. And then just everything else in it. So, I view this as kind of a weird self-portrait. There's also piercing needles in here and just kind of the accoutrements of my life and my medicine cabinet at that time. So then we have Michael Walton's bridge. Michael also designed this beautiful gallery. Michael also designed the Modernist Theater for the showing of that film when that was built out in the gallery. Michael is a very dear friend of mine who I love to geek out and talk about architecture with. And the bridge is, again, the idea of bridging. How do we bridge humanity? How do we bridge community? Where have we gotten to in our life at this point with such disruption everywhere in the world? What is our relationship to that disruption and digging in for greater humanity? So the idea of a bridge going from East LA to downtown begins to metaphorically begin to talk about that as a structure that we all need to lean into as human beings. Then the last image is from the, eight, the 80s as well, which maybe you'll remember the first anti-gay legislation in California was a little bill called AB 101. AB 101 was designed to, um, voters voted on it, to, uh, to be able to fire gays and lesbians in the workforce. And so that was the first like major anti-gay legislation that happened in California in the 80s, in the 89. And so this is a protest that we did, Act Up and Queer Nation gathered at the courthouse. And so this is an act of protest. So you have the body on the precipice, the building of bridge, and the continuing fight in relationship to activism of where we're all still working together as people. running seven day a week lesbian bar in Los Angeles. And my friends and I would go with our mustache and soften a story I tell in my interview that we would ride our motorcycles from Casa de Estrogen with our fake mustaches on. And we would kind of hang out in front of the palms and ask girls if they wanted to ride home. <laughs> and we thought we were like real badass. And we're talking like this is the 80s and 90s, right? And so there was this whole joke about San Francisco dykes versus LA lipstick lesbians. And so we just leaned into being like more of the San Francisco type of dyke and seeing if we could get these lipstick lesbians to have rise with us, which uh, nobody ever went with me. They went with pig pen for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted the exterior. This is very important because it's almost to the scale of the palms exterior and the relationship of this to the street with a, the entire thesis of the exhi exhibition that from the windows you can look into the party this is a constellation of photographs from Club Fuck, but I hung them on the wall part 
of, of, the, of the part of the image because I wanted it to think about wheat pasting. And so they're like almost, even though they're framed, it's like this idea of this constellation wheat pasted up around queer identity on the city walls.